Al Laws with Advice for Life. Um, every Tuesday evening at 8.30, I greet you and meet you here to make sure that you know and understand that I care about your relationships. And me and my wife, my wife will be joining me shortly. We come together every week and we gather with our Facebook family. Um, a lot of you just come on, you come together, we carouse and move together and talk about relationships. And what's great about this whole format is that you get to make comments as we're talking. Um, you make comments to one another. You make comments about the subject matter. And then we speak to it. We, we, we get back to you and talk to you about what um, and give you feedback about what you're doing. So we love this venue. We get love to it. We, we, we get back to you and talk to you yeah, about what. I got my feedback on there. So we love that you can. You, we have the opportunity to bring you this every Tuesday at 8.30. Remember, you can listen to all of our live broadcasts on um, advice, the number four, life.us. Again, that's advice, the number four, life.us. And we have a whole array of video uh, teachings about relationship. You will love it. You can listen to your, to your car on the way to work. You can listen to it while you're working out. There's so many ways that you can continue to improve your relationships. Now, we're not going to be long. I'm waiting for my family to come on. I usually uh, check in on them. And so I'm pulling them up now. See, what, see as my family comes on um, and greet them. Give me one second as I check my, my Facebook. Um, last week, we were talking about friendships and how you are able to relate um, in your friendships. And we had a great, interesting discussion about that. And, and that was really wonderful. And I see my wife is here to join me. Come on in, Aisha. Yep, this is my beautiful wife, Aisha. So I'm Al Laws, and this is my wife, Aisha. And we're your host for Advice for Life. Um, so as I watch my Facebook family come on, you look so beautiful coming in on that camera. Oh, yeah, that was good. That was you. a nice entrance. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I see as my family. I see Dominique. Hey, Dominique, you're on there. I love that you love that you joined us. That you're here, and uh, I see uh, uh, um, Queena, and who else? Pam has joined us. So here's some of my regulars. You guys are always coming through. You get very interesting comments. Um, yeah. So this week we just want to. Um, just give you a little bit more. I don't know if my wife has any follow-up about last week, but um, I thought it was very interesting talking about um, friendship. You know that you know we have to be uh, better at how we gauge uh, who our friends are because sometimes we have this tendency because we want people to accept us, us and like us, and sometimes it, it's based on how long you've been with somebody or how long that you have been in, in contact with somebody that determines whether you know you consider them a friend but I think it's important to have a balance and that balance is mm -hmm. to be able to um, you know be caring and understanding and forgiving for people who are close in your life but also hold them accountable to how right. they respond and how they treat you and if a person's not willing to uh, respond in a loving and open way about how they treat you and you presented something to them uh, then you got to wonder whether they are really your friend because right. then it really becomes about them not wanting to be accountable to how you respond. Now, of course, you can't be oversensitive. You can't make everything an issue. Um, that doesn't make you a good friend. But at the same time, I think that that was good advice. And if you want to uh, look at that program, you can go back next week. Did you have some thoughts about last week? No, I, I, I believe that what you shared was, was very um, important. Um, how we select our friends. I mean, what is right. the criteria that we're utilizing um, when we're pick when we're picking friends? And I think that changes as you grow older. Uh, a friend when you're right. five just depends on whether they like the same game That's you true. like. Right, right, <laughs> right, Dep right. Depends on that. I mean, whether they want to do flips when you want to flip. Or right, right. When um, a friend when you're a teenager depends on what you want to hang out. Sometimes it depends on who's cool. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how that works, but it, I know that's true. It depends right. on who's cool. That's right. And um, as you grow older, you have to be better at yeah. selecting your friends in accordance to how your um, moral center I is. like that. More Your moral code, your moral center, because the Bible says, how can two walk together lest they agree? Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have somebody who's dragging you 
towards doing things that are not consistent with what you know is right, then that's not a good friend. Right. You know, that's that's actually, you know, the Bible also says that uh, that um, poor company, or it also means friends, poor friends corrupts good morals right. and good character. So your character can be corrupted by the people you hang around. You know, the other saying is that you are like the people or you are the people that you keep. And I see my hearts and my thumbs up. I like that you guys are coming on. I see more of my Facebook family coming on. Keep coming on. We're going to start our first part and we'll get back to you. Um, so yeah, you, I think it's so important that we, that we do that. And I think if I want to connect to last week to this week, um, it's really deep because most of us have had both experiences where we have a friend that's very close to us and has meant a lot to us and has done a lot for us in our life. And that is a good feeling, to, to have somebody that you know that has your back, that they're there for you, right. and you both have accountability to one another, and you both um, you know, can go through thick and thin. As I said last week, you really know who is really your friend when you have troubled times. Because right. everybody can be your friend when you have money and that things are going well, but when things are not going well, that's when you can really determine your friends. But I think all of us have also had the experience where we've had a close friend or a person that we thought was a close friend, that we really trusted them. We believed that they were, you know, had our back, and then we found out that they didn't. Right. Now, that is a very difficult thing. Painful. Painful to manage because it's like, oh, my God, like I trusted this person, and I thought that this person had my back, but they really did not have my back. In fact, you, as you examine it, you might find out that they really were trying to tear down your back. Maybe they were jealous of you, or maybe they, you know, they, you know, wanted what you had. So right. they were envious. Um, and so you, you never, I mean, that's a painful thing, and it's hard to get over. You remember, that's a cut that's very deep. That, I mean, only, there's only a couple of, of cuts that go deeper than that. When your when one of your siblings betrays you, <laughs> now that that's a that's a deep that's another level of deep cut. When one of your siblings trusts you, and probably the only thing probably greater than that is that if your parents, one of your parents, betrays you. Now you know that I, that's a whole nother conversation and subject matter. But I, I can see how those things can affect us. But all of us have had that type of experience in our life. I see the thumbs up in the hearts. And if, can you hear me well? Let me know. Put your thumbs up. Put your hearts up if you can hear us well. Um, our microphone didn't connect the way I wanted it to today, so I do want to make sure that we're, you know, that you can hear us well uh, in, in this whole process. So, so yeah, um, I want to connect this last week to this week mm -hmm. because when you have had those deep experiences of cutting, it really makes you recognize that sometimes there are hidden things that are going on. I see my thumbs up. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping you can check them out, baby, and see, make sure people can hear as well. Yeah. Um, and just, just type it in, let us know. By the way, those of you who are listening, and I know you're out there that you're listening, please recognize that we, we'll know that you're there by saying hi or making a comment. And a lot of you are out there, I know, because after the show, they, they show me how many people have been with us and joining us. Please join in. Let us know that you're there. Uh, and, and be part of the conversation. Your wisdom is just as important uh, to add to this. Also, if you look in your left-hand corner, hit share right now. If you share, this will go out to all the folks that you know and your Facebook friends and family. And they'll let them know that you're being blessed by this, this broadcast and um, this, this Facebook Live program. And also remember that um, I want you, and I'll tell you about this later, I want you to go ahead and go on to... Um, um, YouTube, because we're on YouTube, and but for right now, just hit the share button and let people know that you're there. Mm -hmm. So the connection is, is that when you have had that kind of deep cut, you have to, you almost consider that there must have been something hidden going, going on with that person. Because if you felt close to them, if you felt like this person had your back, I mean, it's not, you're not a dummy, and a lot of times you feel dumb when somebody portrays you. Um, and I probably, I probably should have added betrayal if you're betrayed by your spouse I mean for me that would be the greatest tragedy in the world like I'm gonna tell Jesus take me home if my wife if my, 
<laughs> if I find out my wife has betrayed me, I'm not going to go home because uh, cause I, I, I've trusted this woman with her my whole life. But there's something that happens and something must have been hidden in that person that they were, were not willing or not able to communicate. That there was something in their intentions, because remember the awareness wheel, and I want you to remember because this is so important to you understanding and learning how to see your process and also able to see others' process. So in your awareness wheel, awareness meaning I want you to be aware of yourself, and that wheel kind of helps you stay on track about where you are. So the awareness wheel helps us identify our intentions. Those are the things that we mean to do, mean to say. It's the thing that we really are after. And sometimes we, we have to examine that because sometimes we will have behaviors and think that our intention is one way, but really our intention is another. Like you might have an intention to say, I have an intention to be friends with this person, but, you, but really your intention is you need something from them. You want something from them. Um, or they, you know, they make you happy. And so it's okay. All of those things, you have to, once you acknowledge them, the important thing is to acknowledge them. So you start out with intentions, then you have thoughts, and then you have feelings, um, and feelings about your intentions and your thoughts, and then you have your behavior. So you can always track your behaviors backwards by looking at your behavior. What was I feeling? What was I thinking? What was my intention? Um, that's a very powerful way to see your process. And I always tell people, especially when it comes down to your, 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 thought, your feelings, you have to always be very concrete and very clear with your feelings. And the way you do that is you, you use the... Um, you, you use a statement to say, I feel, and then you say the feeling word. So you, you have a feeling word. Don't say a lot of words. Say, I feel hurt. I feel disappointed. I feel betrayed. Those are your feelings. And when you learn how to do that, you go to a very deep place to understanding your behavior. And if you help other people's, people to do that, you will also get closer to understanding what their behavior and what they're trying to do for themselves. And then... If you're saying a lot of words, recognize that that's your thoughts. And those thoughts might be about a lot of things. It might be about the situation. It might be about your feelings. It might be about your intentions. But those words, when you're saying many words, that's not your feelings. Your feelings are one word. I feel hurt. I feel rejected. I feel unloved. Right? I feel uncared for. Those are your feelings. So if you track back your, your, your behavior, you go to feelings, you go to thoughts, your thoughts are the many things, that the words that are coming through in your, in your mind, and then you have your intentions, which are very um, sometimes difficult, but you have to think through, what was I really trying to do for myself? What, what is it that I was really trying to do or trying to get? And you have to be honest with your, your intentions, because if you're not honest with your, your intentions, you start out on the wrong foot and you distort your thoughts and your feelings so your behavior comes out very distorted and disconnected from what you intended to do or what you intended to say. I said a lot there. Yes, you did. So, so I'm going to stop there and let you make comments on that. <laughs> I think a lot of times we don't um, we don't identify with our, our true intent if we are not clear <clears throat> with who we are ourselves. Right, right. Um, then we, we're not connected with our intent until we track the behavior backwards. <laughs> right, right. You can't say that um, you really wanted that person to n know that you cared and so you punched them in the face. Right. That okay. does that, you follow that behavior backwards. <laughs> or call them all kind of names. Yeah, that's not <laughs> what your intent really was. <laughs> Right. Your intent was for them to make certain you had something, and when right. you didn't get what you wanted, then you lashed out. Right. right. So you have to be in, con in, in true connection with your intent, and that really takes some self-exploration. That's right. To know who you are, to know where you stand, and to feel confident in your place. <laughs> yeah, but that's because intent is very hidden, yeah. because we don't look at it very often. Mm -hmm. 
we just we just think we I just had this thought. Well, you think you just had a thought, but there was something you wanted, something you needed, something that you were trying to get for yourself, and thoughts came that were associated with what you wanted and what you needed and what you were trying to do for yourself. Mm -hmm. And those thoughts then lead you to, you have feelings about that. Now, it's not, it doesn't always have to go in that direct direction, but usually it happens, you're going you're, you're to have an intention and you're going to have some type of thought or feeling around that. Because you could have a feeling first and have thoughts about your feeling. But you're, that is going to happen in your process. And the powerful thing about learning and knowing this is because if your intentions, and, and many, many things are, but your intentions more so than even your thoughts and feelings, get hidden. They're hidden because we're not aware of them, because we don't pay attention to our intentions, and sometimes our intentions scare the daylights out of us. They scare the heck out of us. Because we want to believe that we're good people. And most of us are trying to be good. But the bottom line is that sometimes a lot of our intentions are really about ourself. Now, I said it's about what you're trying to do for yourself. Now, that can also be what you're trying to do for yourself that's only about yourself. What you're trying to do for yourself that has selfish intentions and motives. What you want to do for yourself that's not really considering yourself and all the elements and people and things around you. So it's very hidden and we don't always want to look at those hidden places, those hidden um, intentions of things because when you start looking, and it's, it's good if you learn because if you can try to learn how to remove yourself from hiding from your intentions, mm -hmm. you're going to have better outcomes with your behavior. Yeah. I think um, it's important for you to um, stay tight with your intentions. Those are the goals, and if you don't know your true intent, then you really can't move purposefully. Right. You can't move in your life with a, a purpose in mind. Hmm. If you don't know what your true intentions right, are, right, if, right. if I if I know that um, I'm to do you good all the days of your life, that I have a purposeful movement towards right. that. Right. If I have no idea why I'm here, then I don't know. Right. Um, I'm just going through the motions, hmm. and um, that's that gets tiring. Yes. So, so you find the, 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 I like what you said with that because you find the purpose in what you're doing by looking at your intentions. Mm -hmm. And that leads to your, the purposes that you have in life. So you, this is a secret. This is so important that if you want to learn how to be different and respond different and to act different, you know, to not always be res responsive and responding in the same kinds of ways, you have to be willing to look at that hidden place of your intentions mm -hmm. um, because it's very subtle, but once you pay attention to it, it opens right up. You just have to be open and honest and real enough to look at it. And, you know, people talk about being real and keeping it real and keeping it 100 <laughs> and <laughs> 100, <laughs> whatever. I mean, people, all you know, they ain't really real. Well, the way you become real is you have to be willing to look at your process. And the way you become real is that you have to be truthful and honest about your process. So when you say, you know, I'm trying to be real, I need this person to be real, do you really want to be real? I mean, do you really want that person to be real? Or do you want a facade? Do you want people to just continue to, you know, because you can tell whether you want it to be real because if a person um, comes to you and they sit you down and they're trying to talk about how they feel about something and you get all bent out of shape and you go off the handle and how could you think something like that and how could you feel that about well they're telling you what their feeling is as long as they're doing it in a way that's constructive and is skillful then you should be willing to hear what they're saying and why they're saying it whether you believe it's true or not whether you believe that it has 
um, any validity or not. It doesn't matter. It's how they feel. And for them, that feeling is right. It doesn't mean that what they're saying is right. It means for them, they have a feeling that's associated with it. And maybe if you spend the time and you are open enough to hear, then they would be able to, uh, you would be able to give them something to help them with that feeling that they have, or those thoughts that they have. So, I mean, people say it all the time, you know, I want to be authentic, I want to keep it real, but, I mean, I wonder whether people really want to keep it real. I think a lot of times when people say, um, I'm just keeping it real, I, I, I keep it 100, <laughs> that's just them trying to wax their heart cold so they can say cruel things. Mm, right, right. So that they can step away from true compassion right. from brother's heart mm. to brother's heart. Right. That's the, keeping it 100. This mm. means I don't care what I say out of my mouth. But, but that's not truly real. <laughs> that's not No, that's not real because truly real would mean that you would be able to handle that yourself. Truly real would right. mean that everything is line upon line. You're going to you're you're saying something that you want or that you're prepared to sow right. and receive that back, and that's not really. Um, <laughs> and if it's real, if it's real, number one, like you said, some people can dish it out, but they can't take it. So you you would want somebody to approach you a certain way, and you would want them to do that because what you, you can tell because when that person approaches you and they come off wrong, you say you approaching me wrong. So you want people to be skillful and come to you correctly, but what's really real to me is that if you're keeping it real with somebody, then really your intention is not to injure them. Right. Because if you're being real and you're trying to really get across what you believe is a truth, then you're not trying to hurt them, you're not trying to injure them, you're trying to give them something that you believe is true. And if you're really being real then you want to also be available to heal them through that process. Mm -hmm. And especially in close relationships, brother and sister, you know, uh, daughters and, and fathers and husbands and wives and, you know, children and parents. When you're talking about keeping it real, then your realness has to be skillful. That's why you're listening to Advice for Life and you're trying to learn these skills so you can be more skillful in it. But also keeping it real is being willing to, to heal them, to bring healing, and to be, you know, and, and to not injure. Because right. if you're trying to be injurious, you're not keeping it real, you're just an executioner. Mm -hmm. And whatever you sow, you will reap. So the next time you falter or fail and you don't meet up to the mark of somebody, you should expect them to execute you. But you don't expect that because we want compassion. <laughs> <laughs> we we want to keep it real and injure people and tell them like it is, but we want them to tell it to us soft. And you, you didn't have to say it that way. Well, but that's the way you say it. Like a bull in a china shop. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. And actually, when people respond that way, Aisha, the reason why they just blurt it out in anger and the reason why they just say it any kind of way, number one, because they're, they're lazy and it's easy for them to just blurt it out in a very you know, whatever kind of way because it's their anger is moved by it. So it's easy, you know, it's easy for things to ride on anger. That's why people use it all the time. Oh, yeah. it, it just comes out and you do it. The reason why they do that is because they don't have another option. Mm -hmm. They don't know and don't really take the time to try to understand that there's other ways for you to communicate and talk about and share with people where you're really coming from mm -hmm. and help them see what you have experienced, help them see their process, but before you can help them see their process, you got to see your own process. So if I'm angry and my behavior is I want to curse you out, I want to tear you down, I want to tell you like it is, what is my intention? Is my intention to hurt and kill them? Or is my intention to, to let them know they hurt me? So in order for me to do that, i got to look at my feeling. i got to say, I feel hurt. I feel disrespected. And if you do that, you can, have a, you can have healthy, associated thoughts about what it means when somebody disrespects you. Right. And you can have a thought about it. And you won't have to use the unbridled, uncontrolled, and unskilled anger for you to communicate what you're doing that you call it real, but it's not really real. It's actually fake. It's phony. It's false when you respond that way. And it's immature. <laughs> well, I was going to say it's childish. Right. Um, it's important that um, we utilize our experiences 
um, in life and what we desire um, in relationship to help us grow. Right. And I think it's important to always ask those questions. You know, we say it all the time, like, you wouldn't want someone to say that to you. But would, you know, but a deeper question is, would I want to, would I want myself as, as a mom? Mm. Like, the way that I treat my children, if I was them, would I want me as a mom? Ooh, come on, baby, that's your soapbox. Bring that. You know, I, I want to make certain that if I was a child, I would want me as a mom. Yes, yes. You know, um, would I want me as a wife? You know, as a, as a daughter? I want you as a wife. <laughs> as, a, as a friend, would I, would I choose me? And when I look at myself, <clears throat> and I do that in all those different areas that I just shared. Right. Um, I, and I see little glitches. Hmm. Keeping it real to me is dealing with that little glitch. Right. <laughs> That's keeping it real. Keeping it real means you see yourself. Right. Your authentic self with all the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right. And you can, uh, you can open mm. your own eyes mm. to who you are right. and, and work on you because you're the only one that can change you. Mm. No one else can do that. Mm. And no one else can, can make you change. But I can make me change. Yes, yes. I can make me change. I can, I can <clears throat> bring it before the Lord and move purposefully right. um, to change those things that I wouldn't want. Um, um, as a as a sister, as a mm -hmm. as a friend, or what have you. Right, right. I mean, I, I think um, that's very powerful. That you you know, people say, "I want to I want to become the change that I want to see," or whatever that saying is, um, would be the change you want to see. Um, but also thinking about you know, am I if 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 be, to me, being real and being authentic is being in touch with who you really are and to be able to communicate who you really are based on who you are as a person. So if you are, you know, nasty, you know, a terrible person and you don't want anybody to have regard for you and you don't have regard for people, I haven't really met that person really. I think people can act nasty. I think people can... can act mean and do that, but usually it's because they're trying to protect themselves. Usually right. they've been hurt. And so they're not really being real when they're doing that. They're not being, they're not in touch with who they really are, and they're not identifying what's hidden inside of them. They don't see it. They don't see it, because they haven't taken the time to recognize that those hidden things, those things that they have kept inside. Look, there's people who have feelings about things, and they have kept those things locked up inside of them for years, yes. they have resentment, they have, um, you know, hurt and disappointment. Trauma. They have trauma, and they have kept those things locked up inside of them. Those things stay hidden inside their awareness wheel, inside their thoughts, inside their feelings. They hold these things, and actually those things really can bring cause people to be sick. The Bible even says it, that... You know, you know that that those kind of things can cause you to have all types of diseases and mm -hmm. and things like that because you hold things. Now, you know, the contrary to just releasing on people and just venting in relationship is I always think it's always prudent for you to think before you act that you that you give thought because if you go by the principle we talked about last week. If you are trying to remove the log or the big tree that is in your eye, mm -hmm. meaning if you're looking at the stuff that you do, how you are not lining up and how you need to change and grow, if you start with that first, it's amazing how you get compassion for the other person that you believe have hurt you or not done right or whatever because you think back and you see somebody's crossed you and you says. You start thinking, and you look at yourself, and you say, do I have any of that mean? You say, yeah, I crossed somebody before, and I didn't really mean it. It wasn't my intention, and, and I wanted them to forgive me. I was sorry for what I did. So it's amazing when you take the time 
to look at the hidden things and you give thought to what you have experienced, the, the log that's in your eye, before you try to take that little splinter, that little piece of something out of your brother's eye, it's amazing how your compassion changes. It's amazing how you look and your awareness becomes and, and, and adds a lot of compassion. A lot of understanding comes. <laughs> a, a lot of give comes in that when you're able to look at very hidden things in your life. And the scripture that comes to me, because this is so important, because God is always looking at us from the place that is hidden. And that's what I'm going to talk, we're going to talk about in the second part. Because we think that God says, I'm not concerned with the outward appearance and the outward things that men do, do the way men do. He says, I look at the hidden man, the hidden places of the heart. Mm -hmm. Like that's more important to me. Not how much you sacrifice, how much you think you're, you're doing, you know, on the, on, on the outward part. He, he's looking at our thoughts and our intentions and our, our you know, feelings. The things that we're holding that are hidden that people don't see. Mm -hmm. Like God sees us all the way down to where we are bare, that we are exposed, that we are naked. Like you can't hide. God does not allow us to hide because he sees the inner part of who we are. And that's why I never understand when people do things and that they, that they know that are against what they believe and what, what God has said and don't realize that you're not hiding anything. You think, you think you're hiding from man, but man, man, you don't have to deal with man at the end of the day. When you leave this world and this earth and as you... As you walk in this earth and you are a recipient of what you sow and what you reap, because God allows that process to happen, that's what you have to deal with because you're going to be reaping and sowing because God says that's a promise. He's going to make sure that you, you experience what you have done in this earth and then you have to deal with him after you leave this life. So he's looking at that hidden place and he looks at which he wants to see what you are willing to expose in a secret place. And the scripture that came to me is that uh, Hebrews 4.13 And no creature is hidden from God, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we have to render an account. So, nothing is hidden from him. And so if we want to be real, if we want to be authentic, we should try to be in line with what God is saying to us where we are willing to look at everything that's in us Everything that is hidden and that we are aware of those things and we're working at, at revealing and taking forth those things that are hidden and bringing them into the light. Mm -hmm. That everybody that comes to me, the reason why there is a real experience, because I don't have hidden motives. I don't have hidden thoughts and feelings. I have a place where I am willing to expose where I'm at and to deal where I'm at with the people that are in my life. And that is real and that is authentic. But just saying you're authentic and saying you're real when you have all these hidden things that you're not willing to deal with is not really what's real. Yeah, it, that's really activating the manifestations. You know, <clears throat> I think that's important. Like I, when I was sharing about um, what I want me as a, a, a mom or as a wife. Right. <clears throat> and, and really being authentic there um, and breaking it down to my actions and um, my responses to your requests or your um, um, desires for your wife, then <clears throat> then I have to respond to myself and say, hmm, would I have wanted that response? <laughs> That's a tough mm. one. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Mm. Yeah, if I'm going to be real, <laughs> sometimes yes. <laughs> And sometimes, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, no, maybe not, right, <laughs> you right, know. <laughs> right, right. So, I mean, just being authentic in that in that place <laughs> is um, important because when we ask ourselves questions, we like to lean on our good side. I got a lot of good sides, y'all. Right, I do right, when right. When it comes to certain areas, like, but I got some parts that's you know, right. <laughs> they, they got some weeds over there, right. <laughs> more the benefit of the doubt than we give other people. I know. That's we the, we that's give the cool part about us. That's right. we, we give ourselves a pass, man. We get we get we got all kind of get out of jail free cards for us. 
But for other people, man, they get locked up and, and when, yeah. when they violate. So... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I think being authentic in that space is very important. I mean, it's just us and God there, y'all. We can be real with ourselves. Right. You know. Right. And then change when you see it. Right. And so, I, so I'm connecting the fact that that authenticity is really about looking at those hidden places and being honest within ourself, in yeah. our secret place, That's right. in our hidden place. But do we take time to do that, though? Mm. Do people really sit with themselves and God right. and process who they are and their different relationships? Do people really sit and do that? Or are we always busy? Right. Doing something. Doing something. I mean, it's worth it. How are we going to grow if we don't take that time out to grow? It's like, you know, not hitting the gym and expecting muscles. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you, you have to work on it. You have to work on it. Yeah, or, or treadmill if you're not building muscles. Right. And you yeah. can't, you know, you, to lose weight, you, you have to... You have to be disciplined. Right. You, you have to eat properly. You have to exercise properly. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's the same thing with how we give attention to what's going on in the inward parts of who we are. Right. Looking at those secret places, looking at ourself. Um, that's work. You know, it's, it's like any other discipline. It's work to do it. And it's painful. I mean, it's, I know for me, when I'm looking at myself and I see things that are ugly and I see things that are not in alignment with God's character and nature. It's painful for me. And I can actually feel it in my heart. I can feel the pain coming in me. And I see myself fighting because I'm trying to justify. And I'm trying to, you know, you know, you know, you know, put up on the table all the good stuff that I do. <laughs> so so I, I acknowledge something that I really need to change. It really is going on. But I'm, I'm, I'm dishing on the table the things that are good. Because I want to try to somehow justify and balance me dealing with this thing that I've looked at that's deep inside of me so that I don't feel as bad because i got these good things on the table. But all the good things that I put on the table have nothing to do with what I'm dealing with that's on the table that needs to change. Right. That's right. And so I, I have this tendency, I see those thumbs up, I see, I know, I know you can relate to that. So I have this tendency to recognize that, you know, I give myself a pass and I have to resist the temptation of giving our laws a pass when I see things mm -hmm. because I think I'm great. You are. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think I'm great. I think, I think I'm a good person, but it doesn't have anything to do with that because the, you want to be a perfected person. So the more I work on myself, the more that I improve, the more that I look at myself, not only does it make me better, but it makes me better at understanding my process, why I do things that I do, why I say the things I say, why I feel the way I feel, why I think the way I think. And that process is so healthy and it, be, it relieves you of stress and it relieves you of all these other things because you've learned the secret to tap into looking at those hidden things that are in your heart. Right. And, and so to me, it's, it's so rewarding and healthy. And I keep reminding myself when I get into that place and I'm fighting, I said, do you want to be your best self? Do you want to be your most healthy self? Or do you want to spend your time finding nooks and crannies to hide the stuff? And, and my wife says this all the time. We see each other. So people see it. Yes. I mean, it's not like nobody sees it. <laughs> uh -huh. And the people closest to you see it the best. Absolutely. And so if you're willing... We know more than we say. We know more than we say. But that's your... I love when you talk about that. About, about. We, we see ourselves. Oh, I mean, yeah. We see each other. We do see each other. We're spiritual beings wrapped in flesh. So we do see the spirit of the matter. Right. And a lot of times the, the inner parts of us are revealed to others more than we identify. Cause we, we think we got it covered. I got my makeup on, boo. They don't see this little scar right here. <laughs> they can't see it. <laughs> I put my hair over that girl. I got that covered. <laughs> Meanwhile, we see it. We do see it. Mm. But you know, the, the, the powerful thing about um, Christ, 
Mm. When we talk about um, what I want me as a mom or what I want me as a wife, or don't, when we say that we want to put ourselves in, in those shoes, that's exactly what Christ taught us to do. That's what he did. He came in the flesh mm. to have compassion upon us, to see what it was like for us. Mm. So he could really understand. That's why he let Lazarus die, so he could grieve, so he could cry because they're crying. Right, right. So that's why. So he wanted to have these life experiences. He could have he could have just been risen up from the dirt and not have a mom and dad. Right. He could have come as an adult, but he came as a child so he could experience right. all those things yes. and have compassion in all of those life experiences in all those areas. Right. So we need to do that very same work mm. with ourselves yeah, that's deep that's deep that 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 we we best become followers of Christ and the Bible says that we enter into his suffering now a lot of us when we think about suffering we think about him being nailed on the cross mm -hmm. now I know a lot of y'all ain't volunteering to be nailed on the cross so you're not entering into that suffering so that's not the suffering he's talking about the suffering is that you go through this life with a commitment to be in alignment right. with your father. That's right. That you go through this life being willing to change and to grow and to become more like him. I mean, the suffering comes in when you have to look at the most painful places in you or when somebody else, you believe somebody else needs to change... <laughs> And we always believe that. You know, we, we always believe that. You believe somebody else has to needs to change. Matter of fact, you know they need to change, but you are required, according to your Heavenly Father, to look at yourself and look at where you need to change as a, as a criteria, as a first step, as a mandatory requirement that you look at yourself before you look at somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's suffering. That's a suffering. It's, you have to go through something. You have to resist your temptations to, you know, be angry but yet not sin. Mm -hmm. That means you, you're allowed to experience and be angry, but you have to take the time to go in and look at your process, look at your intention, look at your thoughts, look at your feelings, and examine your, your behavior and your past behavior. That takes, that's suffering. It takes Something for you when you, it feels more easy for you to just take something and throw it. Mm -hmm. Or to just, tell, you know, curse somebody out or talk about somebody or, you know, to, to blame. You know, that, that's part of that victim thing. That it, it takes suffering not to become the victim. It, take, it takes suffering to say, I'm not going to victimize myself. I recognize that person has a process that they need to, to deal with. But God, help me look at my process. And if you give me the grace where I have compassion and I can show understanding and I'm in the right frame of mind and I'm in the right spiritual mindset, when I'm dealing with that person's process, I'm not, my intention is really going to be to support, help, and heal them and not to get them back and not to tell them like they need to hear it, you know, and not to show them, you know, how much God needs them to change. <laughs> I got... I want to tell you how much God needs you to change. Mm -hmm. well, it's, it's, like I said, it's amazing that if you look at yourself and how much you need to change, you certainly have a, a much, you put yourself in a much better position with compassion and understanding to talk about how somebody else needs to change. How they need to look at their intention, their thoughts, their feelings, and examine their behaviors that are a result of that if you've done that yourself. Absolutely. Um, you spend time with yourself, and then you understand how other people feel. You know how people feel. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to check in with my family. Thank you, guys. I see you joining in. I see I love the hearts. I, I need some hearts and some thumbs up. If you're feeling this, if you're loving and getting something from this, it's important because we do this as a, as, a, as a exercise of love to reach out and to give you something that we believe is uh, helpful. So we only know that you are with it if you can... Give that. I see those hearts and I see those thumbs up. Thank you so much. And my God, my goddaughter is with us, Dominique. Oh, hi, baby. Good to see her. You got to let me know. You call us and let us know how the baby's doing, sweetie. And um, um, I'm going down. Tina's, Tina Walker said, laugh out loud. I love that. 
the real. You are preaching a place where I used to be when family helped me enhance the better me into sharing more in a positive delivery of treating people how I want to be treated. Wow, very powerful that Dante says growing is painful at times, but it's worth it. Yes, Dante, that's true. Uh, uh, Tina, Tina just jumped on that. And then Queena said, one of the best decisions I've made in my life was asking God to show me me. Wow. I, I'm agreeing with that. Asking God to show me me. Not show, you know, some people want to be prophets and they, or people, people want to have clairvoyant or psychic ability so they can see what's going on with somebody else. But you really are psychic. You are psychic when you are willing to allow God to show you you because you see yourself more than anybody else can see you. So you have psychic abilities for yourself if you take the time to work it, to look at yourself and to be will willing to allow the people who are closest to you to have permission to show you you. And I love that. Show me me. While I didn't like the image in the mirror, I can honestly say it helped me to develop and grow in various areas of my life. Um, Angela said, um, if you are not growing, you are dying. Show me me. I like that. And Pam, Pam said, when God showed me the person in the mirror, it was the best reward for me. I say amen to that. And uh, they said, growing pains. Angela said, why? I'm, why I make choices that I make looking at my life, my experiences, my examples that are before me. So yes, you got to look at what you've experienced and the examples before you. So uh, great feedback. I'm hoping that other people who are there, if you will give us your feedback and your comments, um, remember to hit the share button if you haven't done that. Um, I tell you each time um, that we're here every Tuesday evening at 8.30. Um, you can go on to our website, which is advice, the number four, life.us. Uh, we worked hard to make sure that the letters are proper up there so you can read it up there. Advice uh, four, the number four, life.us. Um, also, check us out. Um, you can, uh, we have an array of uh, programs, uh, uh, podcasts that you can listen to on the way to work while you're working out. We also have all of our videos up there. We also have our videos on our YouTube channel. And I prefer for you to go on YouTube and, and, and just drum up our YouTube, share it, let people know that you're being blessed and that you like it. And that would be really appreciated if you could do that. We got some exciting things coming up. So you want to follow me on my Facebook page, Al Laws Jr. Um, if you follow me and you, um, you, you'll see you'll be um, able, and I think I'm also going to create something on YouTube uh, for you to uh, connect to. But I'm going to do a, a financial series coming up here in the spring. You do not want to miss that. How you relate to your money. How you relate to finances. How you relate to, to, to blessings um, in your life. Um, you don't want to miss that. It's going to be absolutely fabulous. So if you follow me, you will be part of that. Um, some of you who don't follow me, you'll get kind of segments and snippets of it. Um, but I think once you start listening to those, you're going to definitely want to follow me. So go ahead and follow me now. It's easier. Just go follow me on Al Laws Jr. on my Facebook page and love that. So we got a little bit more time. And so I'm going to, I'm going to close it out. Uh, oh, I saw my, my cousin Rhonda's on here. Rhoda. Oh, no, Rhonda. That's Rhonda. That's Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. Good to see you. And um, this is uh, Nate. Nate. Nadia. Nadia. Hi. Hey, Nadia. <laughs> Good to have you. I'm glad you joined us. I'm glad you, you joined in and you're here with us. Again, those of you who are here, you know, let me know that you joined in. Say something. Comment in here. That's the beautiful thing about this, that there's a lot of wisdom that you guys are given. And I love the feedback. It's, a, it's very powerful, very beautiful. Um, and again, always the, the thumbs up in the hearts encourages us and lets us know you're with us. So the, 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 the last part I had on on this fact that this concept that we have hidden things within us that we need to work on and the concept that God is looking at how we deal with those hidden things that is the suffering that is entering into a suffering when we are willing to deal with the hidden man of the heart when we're willing to deal with the hidden motives the hidden feelings the hidden thoughts 
See, a lot of times what happens is that we walk around all the time in our interactions and in our relationships and we have all these hidden things. Now, I'm not saying everything that comes to your mind the first time, just blurt it out and just say it and, and somehow that's not keeping it hidden. No, I mean that you don't deal with it. So I'm talking about things that come up in you several times, feelings that come up to you and they're kind of marinating inside of you, thoughts that are marinating inside of you, and they're happening in your exchanges with the people you're in relationship with. So an example is that your children, your child might do something or say something or respond or you see them acting a certain way and you have these thoughts and these feelings about them and they're coming back up at you over and over again. So I think that what's healthy is for you to acknowledge that. To acknowledge and say, okay, um, I had this experience and I had a feeling that came up when my child did X, Y, and Z. So let me identify that feeling. When, when I saw her do that, I felt this. I felt afraid. Or I felt incompetent because I saw them doing something. Or, or I felt like a failure because they were doing something and I thought they should know better. I, I didn't want them to be that way. If you don't get in touch with your own feeling and your thoughts related to that, you might just go to your behavior and act out on your child without really examining yourself and thinking somehow by you reacting to them in a harsh way or in, in, in another way that somehow that's resolving what's going on, but it doesn't resolve it because you have something hidden inside you. You haven't dealt with it. You haven't looked at it. You haven't examined it. It happens in, in marriage where, you know, in, in other relationships where you have these thoughts that are moving in you and you're thinking about it and you're feeling it. Now that's fine. It's fine for that to happen, but you should be in a process where you see that that thing is happening and that you're dealing with it, that you're pointing it out. And you don't let it get a place where it just kind of hides and sits there unresolved, unaddressed un, um, within yourself. And if you do that, then it starts to get hidden. And now your behaviors come out and you don't even know why you're behaving that way because you've allowed those things to hide in your thoughts and in your feelings. Festers. Yes. And then it grows. <clears throat> starts to stink. <laughs> you so brought your bones. Brought your bones. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I think that that that's also a part of forgiveness. Also, you know, mm -hmm. when you get offended, right? Um, and being able to forgive. I mean, dealing with something that another person does, and um, dealing with your experiences and your feelings about those experiences mm. is one thing, and forgiveness is something that kind of has to walk with it. Right. But, you, but you can forgive someone so that thing's not growing inside of you and then go and deal with it so that you're not angry. And That's if you're offended. Right. But, but, but I'm also saying, even before you get to that place that you might be offended, that it's like a normal walk. We walk around every day and somebody does something, they say something, something happens, and we get a thought or feeling about it. And so either we go inside and deal with that, and you might deal with it by saying, the Bible says love is not easily offended. So you may just look at it and say, look, I, I got very easily offended about that. I'm not putting that on them. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking at me. I, I got easily offended. I, you know, they, they probably didn't really mean that. So that's one way to approach it. Or, or if you're walking about and something happens and you have a thought and feeling, um, you may examine it in a lot of different ways, but I think it's important to, to acknowledge it, to say what it is. And if you can't get past it, your first thing, before you get offended, mm -hmm. you should go and try to deal with it. Right. And if you go and deal with it, but that's what people do. You're right. They, they don't deal with things. They won't address it. They won't be real. They won't be authentic. And when I say, as you said, as I say real and authentic, I don't mean just saying it just off the cuff. I'm saying really examine it and then authentically approach the person or persons that you need to talk to mm -hmm. about what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, but because you examine yourself, you won't, you won't be petty. 
you know, if, if every five minutes you got to talk to everybody in your life about, you know, what they, what you need them to hear or what you need to say to them. It's really you, baby. It's you. Because you shouldn't have that much to say to everybody. Some stuff has to be washed out of you and overlooked and planned, ignored. Remember, I mean, that means that you plan to just kind of ignore it and maybe deal with it at another time that's more teachable and approachable. Sometimes you just have to eat stuff and give people the benefit of the doubt. So if every time somebody does one little thing and you're jumping on them, you haven't given them the benefit of the doubt. Mm -hmm. So, But if something happens over time and it recurs and you still see that and you're looking at yourself, then you will be healthy enough, enough to approach them in a healthy way because you've looked at your intentions, your thoughts, your feelings, and your, and your actions and behaviors so that when you go to them, and then, you, then you'll think about them. You'll say, what was their intention? And I think the powerful thing is that what we teach all the time is that you should give them the benefit of the doubt by looking at their intention and trying to see what good there was in their intention. What, what, what were they trying to do for themselves? Find the good in that person's intention. Even when you think it might have been worthless, that it might have been something that was their intention was not so good towards you, you still can find good in it. What were they trying to do for themselves? So that helps you not demonize it. Right. You know, we make everything, you know, if that person does something, they're the devil. If I do something, oh, I was just bad that day, just please forgive me. <laughs> but they're the devil. Everything they did was, was diabolical. Mm -hmm. But yours was not diabolical. I, you, you'll say to yourself, well, I didn't really mean to say it that way. But you did. So why, when that person says it a certain way, can't you give them the benefit of the doubt and say they didn't really mean to say it that way? So, so my point is that that, that that process has to happen internally in you where you are examining that hidden thing or that thing that tends to want to hide in you um, in your everyday walk. Yeah, and comparing that to whether or not um, Father would be pleased with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like when uh, I tell my girls to do a chore. <clears throat> if I say, and your father's going to come inspect, then <laughs> it is clean. It right. is going to be right. tight. It is, I mean, I'm talking about you can do the white glove test kind of <laughs> tight. Right, 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 right. So, yeah, and that's what we have to do inside ourselves. That's the, that's the life process to me. Right. That's, that's what it means to um, live um, loving God. Mm. That's what it means. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's the life process. Look, we could do a lot of processing with this. I see the thumbs up and the hearts. Keep bringing them. Thank you for joining us again for uh, another uh, Facebook Live uh, program. Um, remember, every Tuesday evening at 8.30, um, we are here. I appreciate the thumbs up and the love and the hearts. You guys are the best. Continue to send your comments. Remember, I want you to share, share, because it's fair. So I want you to repost this. I want you to go to YouTube, look at the YouTube channel, look at some of our videos, and share them with your friends you know, forward it to them, email it to them, um, direct them back to our YouTube channel. Um, I want you to recognize that um, this is a labor of love, and so we need you to participate, to be with us, that you be excited about what we do, um, to make us know that you want us to come back every, every Tuesday. So just go ahead and continue to make comments um, throughout the um, uh, week on, on, our, on the, the Facebook a live uh, place so that those comments will repost um, what's going on and remember um, every Tuesday at 830 we're here to serve you we love you you guys are the best and we will see you next week God bless you